Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it's time for us to review Borderlands Legendary Collection on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the venerable Stuart Jip and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> safe to say that you have in all likelihood uh, played Borderlands in some form, or at the very least you've heard of it. The open world looter shooter franchise has made an appearance on pretty much every console since the original game released in 2009. This isn't even the series' first appearance on a portable system. Borderlands 2 saw release on the PlayStation Vita in 2014, technically. Thankfully, Borderlands Legendary Collection is much better and a much more complete effort to bring the series' first three games and DLC to Nintendo's miniature Marvel. The Legendary Collection packs in the original Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel, along with almost all of the DLC. The final Borderlands 2 DLC, known as Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary, hasn't been included here, presumably because it was released to bridge the gap between Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3, which isn't on the Switch. Everything else is here, though, and that's easily 200 blooming hours of blasting action if you manage to get hooked. Also, in a pleasing touch, the games install separately so you don't have to have them all installed at the same time if you're particularly limited on space. If you somehow don't really know much about Borderlands yet, it's a genre-blending first-person shooter with a mission-based structure incorporating heavy, and I mean heavy, loot elements. Suffice it to say that there are many, many thousands of different guns to find and equip, each with different properties, stats, and little tweaks here and there. This means that you'll always be on the lookout for another, better instrument of death, which gives the game a compulsive loop as you gradually increase in power. You'll pick your Vault Hunter at the start of each game, and then head out into the world of Pandora, progressing through the story in either solo, split screen, or online with up to three other characters. Unsurprisingly, who you choose determines the abilities that you will unlock as you level up. Each character, or class if you like, has a different major skill, such as the Siren who can turn invisible, the Gun Zerker can temporarily dual wield weapons, and the Lord bringer lets you automatically switch targets after a kill basically aimbot. Multiplayer brings these skills into larger focus as you'll need to use them to back up and complement the abilities of your teammates. Enemies get stronger the more players are in the game, otherwise it would be tedious with more people, and that's a bad idea. The experience is observed across all three games on offer here, with the expected upgrades and new elements as you move through the series. That said, Borderlands the pre-sequel is exceptionally similar to Borderlands 2, and the original Borderlands on offer here is based on the recent Game of the Year in Half edition, which backports features from its sequel. As a result, playing through these games can feel very familiar, as they're all fundamentally the same kind of thing. But I suppose that's to be expected. The original Borderlands is still fun, but it feels like the vanilla experience after playing its follow-ups. It's samey looking compared to what comes later, but it's still worth a visit, if not a revisit. This version includes quality of life features from its follow-ups, including a mini-map which replaces the really, really rubbish compass but it's still very much a trial run for a series that would find its feet and sales success with the sequel, which, as presented here, is still a treat to play. Speaking of which, Borderlands 2, a vastly superior sequel that takes everything from the original and cranks it way the hell up, as the kids are saying. More guns, improved diversity of the locations, superior missions, and generally better everything. Unfortunately, this more, more, more philosophy sees Gearbox double down on the often excruciating Borderlands series quote-unquote humour, which effectively amounts to screaming memes and screaming memes. Time to join up with the Crypts and Raiders and Sanctuary. This glacier's full of nothing but murderers or jerkbags, like that hammerlock dude. I'm standing right here, Dude. That being said, though, it's easy enough to mentally tune this stuff out of your head and just focus on the mission if that's your thing. 
I know it's mine. Borderlands 2 is the main event of this compilation, and with all the DLC included, you'll be playing for a long, long old time. Finally, you've got Borderlands the pre-sequel exclamation mark, which, hopefully, obviously, takes place between the first two games. It's pretty much exactly like its predecessor in terms of release or sequel in terms of its canon, this is horrible. But due to taking place on one of Pandora's moons, there's now the addition of an oxygen meter, as well as enormous low gravity jumps which can be chained into satisfying downward slams. There's also a sort of fun, quirky Aussie tone to the whole thing, thanks primarily to being developed by 2K Australia. It lends a nicely distinctive character to your time with the game, and kind of gives it more of its own identity. So what we've got here then are three good games, and let's be honest, you probably already know if you like them. I mean, from hearing what we've already said, or from playing them before, I'm, I'm sure you've already made your mind up. The most important thing then is whether or not the Switch can do them justice, and we are very happy to report that they are an absolute treat to play on the system. All three games look just as good as we remember them, and run at a firmly locked 30 frames a second in both docked and in handheld. If there were any frame drops when things got busy, we didn't notice. They're older games for sure, but porting anything to even a more powerful system can sometimes be a bit of a gamble, so what we've got here is really important impressive stuff. Not quite as impressive as the PS4 and Xbox One 60 frames a second handsome collection, but far better than the original PS3 or Xbox 360 releases, and <laughs> about 14 septillion times better than the Vita port. The games control well on Switch as well, with loads of options including the rather wonderful motion controls which really help with precision sniping. It's a responsive version as playable as any other. If you're going to play it in handheld, we would maybe recommend some sort of grip for the entire system, depending on the size of your hands, because the shoulder button heavy controls can lead to a bit of a nasty case of the old claw hand. Online play is as simple as it's ever been, though in our time with the game we encountered really very few other Vault Hunters, an unfortunate casualty of it being a late port of a series that many people have already rinsed through. When we did get connected though, it was a smooth, lag-free experience and a lot of fun to play in handheld, so if you got friends lined up who can't wait to go hunting vaults, you should have a great time. Borderlands Legendary Collection is an excellent Switch showing for this beloved series, though it's difficult to determine if the price is right. I mean, yeah, there's an enormous amount of content here and you're certainly not being ripped off, but it is old content and these games are routinely extremely cheap on other services. Still, it's a technically excellent port of three expansive, enjoyable shooters and they are a perfect fit for the Switch. Whether played alone or with pals, the compulsive gameplay is terrific to dip in and out of, or get stuck into for a massive grinding session. If you've somehow never played Borderlands before, you can't really go wrong with this set. If you have, but you want to try a different character or class on the bus ride home, now's your chance. Cover me with buttercream and call me Captain Cake. Yes, you've reached the end of the review, and that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts and I don't always refer to myself in the third person. I've always really enjoyed Borderlands, I think it's definitely best as a, as a co-op game rather than on your own. I remember when I first got the very first game, I, I basically bought it on a whim, and I played it with a friend, and we basically just ploughed through hours in just one sitting. We just sat down and got so much done, and then, you know, sort of, I started playing it by myself, and it wasn't quite as good. It's still fun, but not quite as good, you know? And called me a rude boy if you you like, but I never played Borderlands 2 or Borderlands the pre-sequel, so this was the first time for me playing them, and honestly, yeah, I think they're really good. They refine everything. It's it's one of those things where it, I think Borderlands is going to either really appeal to you, or you're just not going to have any interest in it whatsoever. And I think for me it really does appeal as long as I'm playing with someone else. That, for me, is a real crux, and it may be the same for you. So, if you can make sure you've got someone in the sidelines, you can be pretty confident that you're going to enjoy this one, provided you like first-person shooters. Another thing that really pleasantly surprised me was the plot in Borderlands 2. Uh, the pre-sequel didn't, you know, really grab me all that much, but it was still alright. But I remember the original plot of um, Borderlands 1 being really 
massively forgettable, so the fact that Borderlands 2 actually has something decent going on, with the likes of Handsome Jack and stuff like that, yeah, I've got to say I'm a fan. I've unfortunately got to agree with Stuart, though. The humour doesn't do anything for me at all. I find it really grating. Claptrap can die in a fire and I will dance on his grave. I really hate him that much. But you can kind of ignore it, and if you're playing with someone else who has a similar taste in humour, you can kind of just sort of groan together, and it actually means that it's alright. It's kind of like Christmas cracker jokes. That's what this game is. Fun gameplay with awful Christmas cracker jokes. Nice. <laughs>